what's up what's going on what's happening what's popping everyone welcome back to another great edition of simone with the spizzards i'm simone bringing you guys daily sports talk so if you're new here if you're old here you haven't already subscribed to the channel yet make sure you stop what you're doing make sure you leave a comment make sure you subscribe keep rocking with me also make sure you check out the links down below the first link is to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel second link is to shop the official small with the spins on merch collection get you the classic tea the wavy tea or the brand new jaylen make it hurts tea and the last link is to subscribe to our podcast tough calls where me and dylan have some of your favorite sports analysts reporters former and current athletes chop it up with us on the pod also make sure you turn notification bells on because the videos are coming like boom 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 and you don't want to miss a single video or a single live stream guys it's that time of the year again. Sixers basketball is back, baby. It don't even seem like it left. One thing about the NBA and the MLB, it never seems like it left. But Sixers basketball is back, guys. The NBA is back. 75th year tonight. Opening night for the Sixers. We took on the Pelicans and we walked away with a win. 97 to 100. And 17, we're going to get into it. First, we're going to get into the box score. Then we're going to talk about what I like, what I didn't like. But, guys, I'm just glad to be back talking about the NBA and talking about the Sixers. I know, you know, my channel pretty much went 1,000% Eagles, of course, because the Sixers season ended. We thought we was going to have some good Eagles content, but the way the season going. But I'm just excited to be back talking to my Sixers people. So, what's up? What's How y'all been in the offseason? And my biggest question is, what do y'all think the Sixers are going to do this season? Do you, Where do you see the Sixers landing? Um, where do you see us landing? What record, any record predictions? What seeding predictions? Let me know where you see the Sixers, especially after tonight. So, we got the big win, guys. And I know it's the Pelicans. A Pelicans without Lonzo Ball. A Pelicans without freaking um, Zion Williams. But this was a must-win game for us. And let me tell y'all why. I know it's only game one. We play a billion games in the NBA. But this was our first game after our whole Ben Simmons drama. And the team had to prove to each other and to the fans that they're still a team without Ben Simmons. That they still are that team. They're still the team that will come in and get the wins that they need to get. They're still the team that had the best record in the NBA last season. Ben Simmons or no Ben Simmons. So that's why this was a must win. This is the first win after the Ben Simmons drama. If we came out here looking a hot mess, that would have been bad for the team, for the fans. But the Sixers came out and said, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Still I rise. Still I rise. And they came in and got the win that they needed to get. So, guys, first of all, you already know, we're going to get into the box score and all that in one minute. But, you know, in Smoothie King Center, they were chanting, Ben Simmons, Ben Simmons, we want Ben Simmons. And... I know that's got to be annoying as heck for the team, but that's just something that we have to expect all season long from these teams just trying to get in our players' heads. You know, they're going to be yelling and chanting Ben Simmons. Who even knows what's going on with him, if, if, if a team would even want him. Doc Rivers said in a press conference that he still wants Ben Simmons to play. Now, I know Doc Rivers is the utmost professional when it comes to the NBA, and he's going to say the most um, – PC thing to say, which is, of course, we want Ben Simmons to play, even if he doesn't. But let's get into this box score, guys. My life is crazy right now. My sports life is crazy. I've had the Eagles, the Sixers, and the Braves fighting to go to the World Series. So I got a lot going on tonight. My head was spinning. I had the Braves versus Dodgers, which is still going on. Sixers. And then I'm trying to watch that Celtics Knicks double overtime. Like tonight was a lot for me. So this video is kind of coming late. Next video I'm going to do is going to be Friday versus the Nets. Hopefully I'm on camera for that video. On Friday, I cover high school ba football. So we'll see if I'll be able to come on. But let's talk about this win. First, we're going to go through the box score. And then I'm going to tell y'all what I like. It was a few things. Overall, great win. Like I said, it's a few things, a, a couple of things that, that kind of had me a little bit nervous. But overall, great night. Um, let's, of course, we got to start off by talking about cork mods. Furkan Korkmaz just signed an extension this offseason. He came out the gate showing why. He played 20 minutes. He was pretty much our backup point guard. Who would have ever freaking thought Korkmaz would be running the offense? Like, who ever would have freaking thought Korkmaz would be running the offense? Korkmaz was, went crazy tonight, guys. He was just spraying. 
So Cork Moss, 20 minutes, 63% from the field, 7-11 from the field, 4 for 4 from 3, 100% from 3. Heat check going crazy. He was 4 for 4 from the free throw line as well. He had 5 assists and a steal. He only had one turnover. He kept it scrappy. I love that about Cork Moss. And Cork Moss, like I said, he was running our offense off the bench. He did really well with Andre Drummond. When him and Andre Drummond were in those combo plays, they did really, 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 really well. They had um, they had um, Jackson Hayes, the backup um, center from the Pelicans. They pretty much had him on skates a lot of the time. Cork Moss has some really, really, really nice passes. Like I said, he's running our he was running our um, offense off the bench, which was a surprise. Um, and he was able to give Joel Embiid a rest in the second half because he was just playing so well, putting up so many points. He was bursting with confidence, and that's what I like to see. Cork Moss, if he's going to be running this <laughs> offense off the bench, we want him to be, of course, confident. Joel Embiid, 25 minutes of play. He was 8 of 17 um, from the field, 2 of 3 from 3, 66% from 3, 66% from the free throw line. He had 5 he had six rebounds in total, five defensive, one offensive. He had five assists. He did really good finding Tobias Harris um, out of the double teams. Like I say, he had five assists. He had a steal, a block, um, only one turnover. Joel Embiid did extremely well. He just, again, it's Embiid. He showed us he's still Embiid. He's still that guy. Um, I do want to see him shooting less jumpers, you know, like shoot a little less jumpers. But, again, nothing nitpicky. It's Joel and B. He's freaking Joel and B. Um, who are we going to talk about next? Um, Nyang. Nyang did well. He's a new sixer. He played 18 minutes. He was 4-5 or five from the field, 80% from the field. He shot 3-4 of four from 3, 75% from 3. So, just another guy showing that he can stretch it for us. He had an assist as well, and he had a block. He played really well, really promising. Um... Let's talk about Andre Drummond. Andre Drummond went crazy. Andre Drummond has 17 rebounds. 17 rebounds. I, I repeat, 17 rebounds. Andre Drummond also had three assists, two steals, and two blocks. Andre Drummond did extremely well. He shot 50% from the field. Didn't attempt any threes. I like that. 66% from the free throw line. Now, Andre Drummond had four turnovers, and this gets into one of the things I'm nitpicking about. Like I said, Andre Drummond, he showed up big defensively. He was breaking up pick and rolls. He was in transition. His transition defense was amazing as well. But Andre Drummond, and this it's not even against Andre Drummond. It's us not having a true backup point guard. A lot of times, Andre Drummond in transition will have the ball or after a steal will have the ball, and it will just get really, 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 really sloppy. And that just comes from us, from us not having a natural backup point guard. So that's not even on Andre, but just in general, that's something that we're going to have to fix up. Andre Drummond shouldn't be handling the ball as much as he was handling it tonight. Tyrese Maxey. Tyrese Maxey is showing some growth. Tyrese Maxey, 33 minutes. Tyrese Maxey was 8 for 14 from the field. He was playing really well with Joel Embiid and all of their sets. Him and Joel Embiid just have a lot of good chemistry together. Um, he shot 57% from the field, 66 from three. He was 2 for 3 from 3. Um, he was 100% from the free throw line. He had 7 rebounds, 5 assists, um, and only 1 turnover. Tyrese Maxey, I loved his game. He has just been improving, improving, improving. He had 23 points for us tonight. Tyrese Maxey, I mean, he's just, the confidence is stepping up. But there is one thing that I do have to nitpick about with Tyrese Maxey. Um, sometimes it seems like he's a little reluctant on the catch and shoot. Sometimes it's like he's, Wide open in my opinion, but he decides to kind of dribble and wants to shoot more off the dribble than he does catch and shoot. Um, a little nitpicky, but of course, you know, if he's going to be our starting point guard, he's going to have to be much more decisive and much more aggressive um, when it comes to the shooting. Like I said, no complaints. He had 23%. He had 23 points tonight, but I'm just saying in the future, um, when he, you have an open look, when he has an open look, I want to see him instantly, no hesitation, taking the open look, not wanting to... Um, shoot off the dribble when you can catch and shoot, especially if Embiid is like finding him out of a double team or whatever. 
But like I said, biggest thing in my mind is that no clear backup point guard thing is going to really affect us. Like I said, Andre doing a lot of, you know, in situations where he's coming up with a steal and she'll kick it out to his point guard or, um, you know, getting a block, rebound, or if he's in transition, not being able to find, like, you know, the true natural point guard. We need to get that because I don't want to see Andre having the ball as much as he did have it. Um, also, Matisse Thibel, he struggled a bit. But, of course, Matisse didn't play in the preseason. It's the first game of the season. We got the win. We blew out the Pelicans. No big complaints. But, again, it was the Pelicans with no Lonzo, no Zion. So, you know, we just a lot of things we do have to clean up if we want to be a real force. Um, and not only the East, but just the NBA in general. Um, Matisse, the biggest question, and I want to know you guys' opinion on all this. Do you think Matisse can consistently guard the number one guy? Like, you know, in the past, Ben Matisse was getting the guy Ben wasn't getting. Um, but do y'all think Matisse can continuously and consistently lock down the opposing team's number one guy? Because he's going to have to be that guy to step up with Ben Simmons out. But this was a big win. Like I said, we had to get this win. It doesn't matter how light the team was. We still had to come away with this win. We have a tough schedule coming up. We have to be ready. We have to be ready. And like I said, this just shows we can we can rally together. They still have the confidence. They still have the drip without Ben. We knew that, but we needed them to prove that to the NBA. Friday, we had the Nets. The Nets just lost to the Bucks. The Nets, Nets are going to be wanting to come and get a win, especially a win without um, Kyrie. And they're going to be wanting to get a win in the East. So the Nets is going to be huge, huge, huge for us. Make sure you tap in. I'm going to be here post game for the Nets. Hopefully, I'll be able to be on camera. Like I said, I do Friday. I have Friday night lights. So I don't know if I'll be able to do on camera. But after that, we have the Thunder. Then we have the Knicks. The Knicks, like I said, they just knocked off the Celtics tonight in double overtime. Of course, Julius Randle. Of course, they're bringing RJ. Of course, they, they got Evan Fournier now, help off the bench. And then they added Kimball Walker, their new starting point guard. So right after the Nets, boom, we get an easy, we get an easier game in the Thunder. And then boom, we have the Knicks. Then we have an easier game in the Pistons. Then it's the Hawks. We know what happened against the Hawks. And then right after the Hawks, the Trailblazers. So Damian Lillard. So we have a tough. And then right after the Trailblazers, the Bulls, this new look Bulls with Lonzo, DeRozan, Caruso. So it don't get any easier, guys. It don't get any easier. But make sure you're locked in and strapped in to Simone with the Spizzorts. Like this video, leave a comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think about this game. Let you know what you think about this season overall. How do you think we're going to, if we have no Ben and we're continuing with this team, let me know where you think it will land in the East. Well, let me know what you think our record prediction will be and our overall seeding. Let me know what you think about Matisse being able to lock down the number one guy. What you think about Cork Moss running the offense off the bench. Make sure you like this video, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!